All right, folks, here we go. Tim Davis coming to you guys with a, another market review. To call us my weekend market review. It is now Sunday evening. It is now May the 14th, 2023. Time is now about 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I want to start out by looking at um, the VIX, the SPXA 200R, which is also which is a sentiment tool of the overall market, and the dollar. All of these are, are pretty much tools that I like to keep an eye on, which gives us the overall sentiment of what the market is looking to do. Um, we're going to look at three, uh, a couple different time frames on each one and show you guys what the market is showing us. So the first tool we're looking at right now is the VIX. So this is the VIX. We've seen how we got a nice little pop off of the VIX on last week. I think that's just a precursor. This is a warning. Telling folks what the market is is, 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 um, is overall preparing to do. Okay, so that is a, um, a precursor. What we can expect going forward, the VIX really wants to go higher, folks. It wants to go higher. So we're going to see this movement up and down within this VIX until it finally finds a way to break out of this range in a meaningful way. So we get that close above 22. Um, on a weekly chart, folks, um, the VIX is, 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 is that's 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 an area that I'm paying close attention to. If you get a weekly close above the $22, $22 level on a weekly chart, uh, we could see the VIX really start to ramp up. And, and I'm going to show you guys those time frames as well. But that's what we look like, like right now in the VIX. The VIX is, is gearing for a big move. We drop down below out of this range and quickly pop right back up above the range and then we're back in the range again and as you can see on this daily chart the VIX is just pretty much at the bottom of the range ready these two big these two green candles are ready for a possible bounce back up out of that range so the VIX is at the bottom of, of its range folks which means it probably won't stay here long if you look at the um wins percentage Closer to oversold territory again. See, um, full stochastic closer to oversold territory, and RSI is just hovering right in the center. It leads me to believe the VIX is just basing again, right at the bottom of the upper range, preparing for the next move higher. And if we look at the weekly chart, you'll see same type of scenario. VIX again, weekly chart, it just shows you that it's just right at the bottom of this range, like it's ready to turn and go higher. Okay, we get that close above 22. On the weekly chart, I expect we're going to see the VIX hold it and start to really take off. So as we approach the end of May, beginning of June, um, I look to start to see, uh, I'm looking for much more extreme volatility in our overall markets. And if we take this and take a quick glance at the monthly chart of the VIX, it's a monthly chart. See the month of May is really looking like it's starting to um the VIX is starting to pick up momentum in the month of May. Here's a monthly chart. And as you can see, we've been in a in a downward trend for quite a bit, but now the VIX is starting to look like it wants to pop back above its 200 day moving average on this monthly chart. So this month of May, we're starting to form a green candle in the VIX. Pick right close to that. Uh, we got a, a couple more weeks left before the end of the month of May. But I think the month of May, we're probably going to end up seeing a, a VIX finish in the green for the month. That's a huge possibility. Positive for the VIX, negative for overall markets. So keep that in mind. That's a look at the VIX. Now. Let's take a look at the SPXA 200 off. For folks who have been following me for a while, you know this is also a sentiment tool that I like to keep my eye on. I have not glanced at it in a while, but we want to glance at it now and show you what this tool is showing us. It's also showing us, if you look at the daily chart, that it's at the bottom of a range and it's been hovering around here for quite a bit on this um daily on this daily chart. So it's hovering around here in the bottom of this range. Could we see a, a, a bounce in it that, that would be positive for the markets? We could, but I don't, I think that would be short-lived. 
It's hovering at the bottom of this range. And if you look very closely, at what the price action is showing us. Here is our 50 print moving average. Here is our 200 day moving average. It's like price is getting compressed between the two, okay? It won't be long before price action is gonna have to, it's gonna have to make a decision. If we get this 50, 20, I'm sorry, 200 day moving average across above this 50, it's going to be a very negative sentiment for the overall markets, okay? This 50 level, 50% 50 level, is what I pay close attention to in this tool. Anything above 50 is positive for our markets. And, and that's if we, you know, coming from a um, downward motion going up. If we get back above 50, it could be positive for our markets. But if we continue to hover around here and drop below, continue to drop further below 50, already below 50%. Of stocks trading above the 200 day moving average. And the highest we have been uh, over the past year is 97%. Right now, we're having right around 46% of stocks trading above the 200 day moving average. If we drop below this 50 per moving average and drop below 45% and stay there, it's not going to be positive for our markets, folks. This is what the market sentiment tool is showing us. Here's a weekly chart of this tool. And I definitely want to point this out. What the weekly chart is showing us because I think it takes precedence over the daily. And if we look at the full stochastics, it like it wants to turn lower. Whereas percentage is already heading lower. RSI also like it wants to continue to head lower. And we're very, very close to a drop below our 50 period moving average on a weekly chart. That's negative, negative sentiment for our market. And if we take a glance at the monthly chart, and this looks even more dire. So the monthly chart, you see the sentiment tried its best to rally since October and pretty much made it up to this 50 to 200 day moving average, got it back up to as high as almost 80% of stocks trading by the 200 day moving average. And look what's happened since then. This is where we stand since then. Back below the 200 day moving average on the monthly chart, it looks like sentiment is getting weaker right here the past two months. Look at the um, wins percentage. It's now hinging lower. And even though price, I mean, even though we saw positive sentiment from October up until about the middle, um, beginning of this year, April, um, April, March or April, the full stochastics has been trending downward since the beginning of the year. That's negative divergence. Full, um, so the percentage has been trending downward. Ours, um, full source stochastic has been trending downward with a negative move over the past month showing a possible sell signal coming in here on the monthly chart with the green crossing back below the red. And if you look at the RSI, it's just starting to bend lower as well on a monthly chart. So that's all negative for overall markets, folks. We're getting very, very close to a decision. But overall market is going to find a way to get out of this range, this tight range that we've been in. And I think the overall move is going to be lower over the next couple of months. We're probably going to start to see an acceleration to the downside as we head into June and July. So I think that's what's, what we're about to see, acceleration downside heading into June and July. So that's the SPXA 200R, close, close look and longer term look. Now, another thing I've been paying close attention to folks was the dollar. Sorry, go back to our daily chart. So we could definitely see some type of uh, bounce here in the near future as we head into the beginning of this week. But I think any bounce is going to be short-lived. Let's look at the, um, let's see this four-hour chart real quick. Here's the SPXA 200R on a four-hour chart. So we're at the bottom of this range. So we could see positive sentiment over the next couple of days or so as we head into the beginning of this week, a little bounce up here. But as you can see, anything that we see in this area. I don't expect it to be anything worthwhile noticing or paying attention to. So I think every time we reach 
back up to around its 50% um, level as far as overall sentiment on SPX 200R. I think we'll get it, continue to get rejected at this level and pull back down. I think the next rejection is probably going to be detrimental for overall markets. Now let's switch to the dollar. And I'm going to look at multiple time frames on this dollar. Start off by taking a look at the four hour chart. So um, the dollar got a huge, huge bounce on last week, folks. And that is a very negative sentiment for our market. Dollar got a huge bounce, as you can see on the four hour chart, it's like it wants to break back above this 103 level. Okay. Temporarily in the near term, I think as we head into the beginning of this week, dollar's pretty much overbought. Look at the four hour chart. It's extremely overbought. Looking at the um, RSI, winners percentage, and full stochastic overbought territory. So, the beginning of this week, I do expect we could probably see some type of, some type of, you know, short term rally in our overall markets and the dollar pull back. But I want to point out the dollar made a huge move, folks. This is a huge move. Okay, so it could pull back. But as it pulls back, what I expect to see is this 50 print movement average start to curl upward. Dollar finds some way to find support here and bounce again. I think the next crucial bounce, it will probably push the dollar above the 50, I mean, the 200 day moving average on this four hour chart and push it above 103. So I do, again, I do think this dollar is going to be a huge key for us to pay attention to. A strong dollar is going to be very, very weak for the overall market. It's not, it's not going to be positive for the overall markets. So I do expect the dollar to probably see some type of pullback here in the near future. But it's already made that huge move above 50 per moving average, and that is a big deal. So pay close attention to what the dollar does as we approach the beginning of this week. Uh, a pullback um, in the dollar could be positive in the near term for overall markets, but I think it's going to fake markets out and then rally again. Look at a daily chart. Again, you see. We got a big move in the dollar on last week. So that big move in the dollar on last week back above its 50 per moving average in the daily chart. Look at that. Overbought territory. So I do think we could see a slight pullback, but I think that'll be short lived. That's what our daily chart looks like. And one more look. Here's a weekly chart of the dollar. Finally starting to get that bounce from the bottom from the bottom. See this huge bounce on last last week. We're starting to get that move off the bottom of the range, folks. So I su I suggest I, I suspect we will start to see a move like, like so. So any pullback is gonna be more than likely start to see these. Higher higher lows and higher highs be created within a dollar. Okay, so again, I do think we're coming off of a bottom, and I think we're going to start to see these higher lows and higher highs. So we got a higher high here, back here, right here. And we're going to create another one soon. So. Slowly but surely, the dollar is starting to tick higher, folks. That is not positive for the overall markets. All right. Now, so we looked at the um, VIX, the SPXA 200R, and the dollar. And let's take a look at the overall markets. I'm going to switch back to multiple time frames here as well. So let's take a look at the SPX, SP500. So here's our four hour chart again. As we approach the beginning of this week, we could see a little move higher. But this this range has been extremely tight on the raw markets. And you guys been paying attention, you see we get a move up, then we pull right back down. We get a move down, pull right back up. But this range has been extremely tight. Extremely tight. So we are now within a range, creating another range, short-term range. So we are pressing right on a 50 pair moving average on this four hour chart. So we could see a little bit more move higher, but we could run into to resistance real quick and come right back down. That's what the near term four hour chart is showing us on the S&P 500. 
Let's take a look at a daily chart on SP 500. It looks negative. It's extremely negative. It's very tight range, very tight range. Sorry. Very tight range that the S&P is showing us. So like we're about to break this range, folks. So this is the near, the short-term range. The longer-term range, I'll point it out when I look at another time frame here. But I'm going to show you guys the short-term range is showing us. Right in between this 4,000 um, 4, level up into this 40, it's called a 4,175. But if you look at the um, full stochastic, it's like it's ready to start to hinge lower. Okay, we're just hovering here with all of this indecision here. Looks like we're about to get a resolve here in the very, very near future. Now let's take a look, step back and look at the longer term weekly chart. Again, you see that we got a, the weekly chart shows that we've been hovering around the top of this range for quite some time. Right below that 4,200 market has been having a very extreme hard time trying to break above the 4,200. And it looks like to me that the bears is sitting right there, right around that level, continuing to sell right around that 4,200. Between that 4,150 to 4,200 level, the bears just been selling. So I think that 4,200 level is probably a ceiling. It don't like, doesn't like the markets want to break that level. And if you look at the wins percentage, full stochastics, both showing in overbought territory, RSI is starting to hinge, starting to bend lower. TTM squeeze showing negative sentiment, showing that the, the upward sentiment um, is starting to lose its steam. So that's what our daily, our weekly chart is showing us that we are at the top of a range and the S&P looks like we're ready to head lower. And let's look at one more time frame, the monthly chart, because it's also showing us something that we really need to pay attention to. Again, looks like monthly chart is showing that ceiling, that huge ceiling here that has been very difficult for markets to break. And I don't think we're going to break it. I think we're going to start to head back a little towards the bottom of the longer, of the bigger, um, the longer term range, which is right below around that 3,800 level. I think the next couple of months, folks, I think we're not going to see for the bulls, uh, I would suggest if you start to put some type of protections in place. So I think as we move forward through the rest of this month, I mean, the rest of this month and the rest of the summer, I think it's going to be difficult for the bulls to push price higher because we're already at the top of this range. We've been hovering there for quite a bit. So I think the rest of the summer and the rest you know, over the next several months, I think we're going to see um, a lot of volatility with the overall sentiment or the overall direction pointing downward in favor of the bears over the next couple of months. Now let's take a look at the Dow Jones. I'm going to work backwards since we're already on a monthly chart here. Also, the monthly chart shows at the top of a range. And it's showing us that we're look, looking weaker, starting to look weaker as price actually okay, wants to start to dip. If you look at the well, um the, the, the winds percentage and full stochastic, like we're starting to trend hinge lower out of the overboard turrets on this monthly chart. And we're starting to put in a red candle for the month of May. That's very negative for the overall markets. We back up, look at a weekly chart on the Dow. And the Dow has pushed up against the upper part of this range and look at what's happening. It is already starting to pull back from it on this weekly chart. It's already starting to pull back from the top of that range. So that's very negative sentiment for the Dow. Look at some of the near-term action in the Dow. We're at the bottom of a range. So it would not surprise me to see some type of bounce in the Dow, but because it's down with trend in motion, any bounce, I think it's going to be very muted. Don't think we're going to um, rally all the way back up there. That's just my opinion. I don't think we're going to get that, that much, that strong of a rally. 
but we could see some sort of a rally as we are trying to bounce off this 50-day moving average on this daily chart. We're trying to bounce off of that 50-day moving average. So the beginning of this week could be, you know, fake out move. We could see a rally. We got to wait to see what happens. I'm not sure. But I think any rally that we see is going to be met with some fierce selling because the bear's trying to take full control of this price action, folks. And here's our short-term four-hour chart. And as you can see, again, we're at the bottom of this range and it's showing that the overall sentiment in the near term, it is trying its best to bounce off the bottom of this range. And we're starting to see the momentum starting to shift towards the favor of the bulls near term. But I think anywhere in this area, anywhere in that area, if we do get a bounce, we're going to probably going to see a rejection. So pay close attention to that as we start the beginning of this week. Could be a fake out rally and then right back down. All right, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. All right, here's our NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ looks the opposite of uh, some of these um, short term um, char um, charts. Well, when the NASDAQ shows that we're at the top of a range and starting to head, head, head lower. So now, with the NASDAQ at the top of this range, I think it, it probably put in this high around right at 12,364. I don't think we're going back up to that level. That's just my opinion. I think any bounce in the NASDAQ is going to be met real quick with resistance. That's even in, in the near term. So pay close attention to that. That's a four hour chart of the NASDAQ. Here is a NASDAQ daily chart. And as you can see, NASDAQ has been on a, on a rally. We had the top of the range. So I think we're about to definitely head lower in the NASDAQ while it's heading, while it's just hovering around the top of this range on all time frames. Look at our weekly chart. Again, NASDAQ had it, is at the top of this range. So I do think we're going to start to see a much more weakness in the NASDAQ than in our um, Dow and our S&P because we're already at the top of this range. Top of the long-term range. So I think we're going to start to really see um, the NASDAQ start to give up the ghosts. Here's our monthly chart in the NASDAQ. Again, back at the top of this range, folks. Pick the top of this tight range that we've been in for quite a bit. And you look at the last two months on the NASDAQ. The strong month here. And then these two weak months right here. Like, like the engine that could. We think we can. We think we can. But this is like it's running out of juice. It's running out of juice. I think we're going to start to head low on a monthly chart as well. NASDAQ, one more we'll take a look at is the Russell. And the Russell has been the weakest of all. And it's like it is just continuing to trickle lower. This is a monthly chart of the Russell. I don't, and I think the Russell is one that we're going to see so very soon on a longer term chart, see some, see it dip into oversold territory in a major way. It's been weak. Every time it's tried to rally, it's just been weak and it has not been able to to make any huge strides. So this monthly chart shows that we've been in a downward trend and well below major moving averages for quite a bit in a Russell. And if you look at the full stochastics, we're even starting to hinge lower. Continue to head lower on a full stochastics, RSI and a wins percentage, even on the monthly charts. And we're getting very, very close to breaking below this level that I've marked, which is the level that we were at back in 2020, if we break below the level, folks, that's around about the 1650 level. It's going to be detrimental for overall markets. Take a look at a monthly chart. I mean, a weekly chart. You see, we below major moving averages, well below major moving averages. We have price action below on the weekly chart, below the 200 day and the, and the 50 day, 50 day moving average, which is my purple line, 200 day is my red line. We are below that level, which is very negative. It's very negative for the world markets. And at the bottom of the range. So would it surprise me to see a little 
short-term rally in the Russell? No, not at all, because we're at the bottom of this trading range. But I think any rally, again, is going to be met with some fierce resistance. Here is our daily chart. Daily chart shows that we're really just trying to dig lower. This month, this um 50-day moving average is acting as a huge level of resistance. So every time price action tries to like it wants to get back towards that 50-day, it pushes right back down. So the 50 period moving average is, is just doing what it's supposed to do in a in a bearish market sentiment. It's just continuing to head lower. So any rally we see. Met with fierce resistance right around the 50 per moving average, and we'll continue to head lower. Again, pay close attention, folks. If we break below this over here, show seven, break below the $1,700 level um, anytime soon, we, it's not going to be positive for the overall markets. That's the Russell daily chart. Let's look at the Russell four hour chart. And if you look here, it looks like markets want to. Get a short-term bounce. So it would not surprise me in the beginning of this week. This is your term, short-term bounce. Look at the one winning percentage and over sold territory on a four-hour chart. So could we see a little bounce here? Yes, we could. But I think any bounce, folks, are going to be met with fierce resistance and then take us to, back down to the lower lows. All right. I think that is everything. I wanted to put one more thing out real quick. One more thing. I think that's what the S&P. What's with the S&P? Uh, daily chart. Let's see. Nope. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones. I needed to point something out here. That's S and P. So again, I told you guys if we look very closely, we see um, S and P getting very, very close to um, the fifty per moving average, and the two hundred days getting very, very close together. That's very that's a um, negative sentiment for overall markets. And if we notice, just for uh, just at a glance, you see that the S and P on last week, this is a 15 minute chart, hit the bottom of this range and it really, really rallied right back up towards the top of this range. And now currently, 15 minute chart shows us in overbought territory. So could be in store for a wild, a wild ride as we head into the um, trading day on Monday. So looking at multiple time frames all together, I wanted to point something out is looking at the daily chart, we can see very, 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 very negative sentiment. Here's a daily chart. Look at the um, this 20, this 20 per moving average, folks. It's, this is a blue line here on this time frame. This is a daily chart. Price action is now below the 20 per moving average. 20 per moving average is starting to curl lower. That's very negative for overall markets too. In the, in the near term, I wanted to point that out on the daily chart of the Dow Jones. And one more overall market time frame. And I do think the um the Nasdaq is going to be the fake out one. It's going to really uh, confuse folks as we head into the beginning of this week. I think the Nasdaq. Is is running into some problems at the top of this range. We had a little bounce on the 15-minute chart over here to my left, and it looks like it is probably going to be met with some resistance here in the very, very near future. So I wanted to point that out so everyone can be aware to be mindful as we head into the beginning of this week. We're going to see a lot of mixed signals because we are out trading around the top of the range ranges in these major indices. So we see a lot of mixed signals. 
And I think every signal is going to be met with some fierce, fierce selling. I think the bears are ready to dig their teeth into this overall market. All right, folks, that's all I have to show you guys for this week, this weekend. Hopefully this is enough information that you guys can use to start to make some wise decisions, decisions in your trading as we continue to navigate through this bear market. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you guys sometime during the week.